The Traitor Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickinson is one of my favorite novels that I've read in the recent past, but I am going to preface this review by saying that it is seriously disturbing, and I would say that about 70% of the people that I've recommended this book to have really disliked it. So settle in and see if you might be part of the 30%. So The Traitor is part of the series of books. It is currently a trilogy, but I think Dickinson is going to come out with one more book that's set in the world, but it is called uh, Masquerade. That's the name of the series because that's the name of the empire. I don't know where to begin because um, there's just so many different things that I love and that I am obsessed about in this book but I guess I'll start at the beginning so at the beginning of the first novel which is the traitor so there's the traitor the monster the tyrant and all of them described Baru Cormorant who at the beginning of the first novel is this young girl who is living in a beautiful island with her parents and on this island they have pretty liberal and progressive ideas about sexuality among other things so she has a mother and she has two fathers and all three of her parents love each other and they are a very close-knit family and her mother is a um, is a chieftain and one of her fathers is a soldier while the other one is more gentle and takes care of the home it honestly sounds ideal and then one day these ships come into harbor and it is the empire of masks and what follows is a excellent description of how colonialism works you have the trade you have the illusion of them trying to coexist and be like oh yes of course your culture how lovely of course things are a little bit different in our culture but you know different strokes for different folks and then as the trade progresses you have Taranok which is the island where Baru lives um, it becomes fully financially dependent upon the empire and then suddenly with this financial dependence come all the invisible little strings that slowly become more visible and then bit by bit all of a sudden Baru and her friends are living in a re-education camp being told by the empire that their way of life is wrong and the empire is calling the shots. One of her fathers disappears and it is presumed that he died and her remaining two parents join the resistance. The empire starts saying that you know relationships must be between one man and one woman that it is the duty of couples to be fruitful and you need to follow a homogenized version of culture that holds true from one end of the empire to another and eventually the day comes when Taranok ceases to exist and it is even named something different now from the moment that we meet Baru we are aware that she is a special person now obviously this is true in pretty much all of fantasy right even the most ordinary of our protagonists tends to be somehow special. But in the case of Baru, she is just a great intellect and her ability to think out of the box is what really brings her to the attention of the Empire who begin to take a special interest in her because one of the things the Empire does is that when it subsumes a population into itself, it also recognizes members of the population who might be beneficial to its prolonged success and survival. And so Baru becomes not just another colonized subject, but she becomes a special project. And what's really interesting about Baru is that she looks around her. She recognizes what is happening to her homeland. She knows it is wrong and she wants to stop it. She sees her family broken apart by the policies of the empire and she swears revenge the same as her mother and her remaining father. 
but while her parents do the more traditional okay we are now rebels and we are in rebellion against the empire and we're part of the resistance and we're just going to work against them Baru looks at it from an extremely logical viewpoint and she understands that this one tiny island cannot match up to the might of the empire so if she wants to save her people she first needs to gain power within the empire and then she needs to destroy the empire at its heart and so she turns around and she joins it just flat out embraces everything the empire says and so while she herself is a lesbian she shows absolutely no remorse whatsoever in pretending that she's not she's like what i need to live a life that's a lie cool sign me up and she turns her back on pretty much everything that her parents and her culture told her to hold dear and the books become her journey into becoming this person that she doesn't even recognize herself and she does all of that you know she basically kills herself in a way that the empire could not and she does it so that she might change the world it is a story of extraordinary sacrifice and it is a story of just incredible excruciating emotional agony there are so many books out there that talk about colonialism and that talk about the effects and the price of it but you really feel the sacrifices that baru makes throughout this novel you see her transformed into a villain and it is the worst thing that you will experience yourself because you feel her pain you understand each and every one of her decisions and the steps that she takes and it kills you just as much as it kills her there are no moments in this book of awesome there are no books you know because her successes you know like every time that she does something that she has set out to achieve it means death it means destruction it means betrayal and because baru is a savant she's really good at the things that she's doing and you see her being really good at these things and it's such a discombobulating experience to see a character who is so good and you are both rooting for her because you understand her aims but my god you're so devastated every time she wins i should also have a warning out here for um all the violence that you're going to read in this book or these books i mean it's not even just the action sequences which are sensational by the way dickinson writes his action scenes as if it were poetry it is incredible what he can do with blood and gore you're both horrified and you are enthralled but that's not even the worst part you know and that's what his greatest achievement is in my opinion because he shows you all this violence this outright violence you know people dying being like torn apart but that's not as bad as all the other stuff that's going on the violence of ideas and of culture in this book there's homophobia there is rape forced reproduction there are a bunch of lobotomies that are wielded as a political tool i mean the actions that go on in this book whether in the background or off stage are truly vile and you get the sense of why all of this is happening and it's not even like you can blame one person you know there's this one villain and if you murder this one villain you know this big bad person or entity and they're the reason why all these bad things are happening it's not even that it's a bunch of people who don't even feel particularly malicious towards the people that they're targeting and they're just coming together and just looking out for the common good their common good and taking the actions that are required in order for this empire to function there aren't a lot of books about colonialism that talk about how colonialism as an enterprise is so bureaucratic and this book really makes you live it 
And Baru, of course, is a fantastic character. You know, the idea of becoming a monster in order to fight a monster, and then to find out that there isn't even a monster that is real, but is rather just an amalgamation of hodgepodge ideas that are sort of put together in order to derive the maximum profit. The evil in this book is so banal that every time I think of a passage or of something that happened to Baru or to other people in this book or something that Baru sets in motion, you know, what really kills me is that there is no conviction behind all the evil that happens. People aren't really working out of an ideology to which they are devoted or anything like that. They're just doing the things that need to be done in order to keep a machine in progress. And it really makes you think, you know, there's a reason why colonial fantasy is not as popular as other genres of fantasy. And that is because it really makes everybody uncomfortable. Because there are things in this novel that if you extrapolate into real life, I mean, the easy thing would be to compare it to extinct colonial administrations. So you can look at the British Empire or the Spanish or the Portuguese or the Dutch or pretty much every European empire out there. Or even, you know, further back, if you want to look at the Roman Empire, for example, or the Byzantine or whatever, you know. You can look at all of those and be like, oh yes, very terrible, how sad. But you can also look at America and you can look at Russia and you can look at China and you can see the parallels between what these nations are doing today and what is being described in these books. And it really lays it out to you, you know, the economic colonialism, the cultural colonialism, the way capital is used, whether it's monetary or whether it's social. Even the use of lobotomies within this book, you know, it really makes you think about the heads of government of modern day empires. And we do have modern day empires, we just don't call them that anymore. And it makes you think about the people who are in power in those empires and how they basically live to service those empires rather than any greater good. It's really depressing and I don't blame the people who have read this book and didn't like it. This is not like an easy breezy read. It's not going to uplift your mood. It's not going to make you think that, you know, the world could be a better place. The tone is extremely grimdark and it kind of tells you that the world kind of sucks. But the prose is amazing. The ideas are explosive and it is sincerely one of the best books and the best series that I have read in my life. So for that 30% of you who are going to be really into this, I highly recommend it. And for the 70% of you who might pick it up and are going to spend hours cursing my name, I'm very sorry. For more videos, please hit the subscribe button.